No, you should not get a Dalmatian service dog. And here are some reasons why. What? Yeah? You ready? Now I want to begin this video by saying that I really love Dalmatians and it goes beyond just liking the look. I love their personality. I do know about Dalmatians. This is not my first Dalmatian. And I'm making this because I care about the breed. It's not because I feel like I'm more entitled than other people and it's my breed. I genuinely care about the breed and I know how many Dalmatians are given up and how many are in shelters or Dalmatian rescues because people don't know the breed they're getting into. That said, yes, I've had a Dalmatian since I was nine years old. His name was Pongo. He passed away when he was eight from a very common thing for Dalmatians called kidney failure. Lucky is my second Dalmatian. So I have had a Dalmatian in the house since I was nine. I collect Dalmatians. I love anything Dalmatian. I have what I'm hoping to one day be the largest Dalmatian collection in the world. I have over 1,500 pieces right now. I don't recommend Dalmatians as service dogs. It may sound very hypocritical of me because I have a Dalmatian as a service dog. And I want to explain that real quick so you guys know why. When my old Dalmatian Pongo died, I was ruined. I did not want to leave the house. I didn't want to do anything. I thought about him all the time. I was in hysterics. And so I immediately went searching for a Dalmatian puppy. No plans on making him a service dog. However, at the same time, I was looking into service dogs and just then learning about what service dogs can be used for and what I can get out of it because I had at the time not developed POTS, but I had severe anxiety and I had stopped attending public school in the school system. So the first puppy that was close enough we went to, I want to say here and totally admit it because a lot of people think it's something to be ashamed of, but it was an accident. He is backyard bred. I have learned so much about dogs that's more generalized besides just the breed now that I'm in the service dog community. And I do know backyard breeding is not something to support. And I totally supported it. Lucky's from a backyard breeder. He has horrible confirmation, but he is an amazing dog and I would not give him up for anything. That said, I do not support backyard breeders. I would never get one from them again. I already have a breeder I know I'm gonna get my next dog from. No matter what sort of dog you get, always remember to either, you know, get a shelter dog, or if you're gonna get a specific breed, support responsible breeders. Now back to adopting Lucky. I found the first one I could, which happened to be a backyard breeder, and I immediately went to get him. It was only a little while after having him, maybe a week or so, I was still keen to service dogs and I realized people own a train. Why not try with him? And so from then we started basic obedience and it went on from there and I was incredibly lucky. I was incredibly fortunate that he had an amazing temperament and he was perfect for the job. That does not happen often. An older trained dog is not normally a success because a lot goes into a service dog. I was just super lucky. But anyways, that's my backstory to explain the hypocrisy here. Lucky was not intended to be a service dog. I figured I'd try it once I realized I could try to owner train. And not gonna lie, don't tell Lucky, but I 100% expected him to wash out and I planned on getting a lab. But he doesn't need to know that. Finally, let's get into why I say you should not get a Dalmatian as a service dog. The first reason, and one of the reasons I point out the most, because it's the hardest in my opinion, is diet. In most any breed information book about Dalmatians, you are gonna find information on diets and a thing called purines. This is that chapter in the DCA book. Dalmatians are unique in that they cannot metabolize very well a type of protein called a purine. And a purine, is a type of protein that's normally found in things like organ meats, red meats, and some sorts of vegetables like beans. Because of this, they can clump together and cause things called purine stones or urate stones, and those can block the bladder. Not all Dalmatians are purine forming. There are types of Dalmatians called LUA Dalmatians, low uric acid Dalmatians, who have actually been bred out of that gene that has them not be able to process purines very well. 
but a majority of Dalmatians are not specially LUA, which means that they can have a chance of developing these stones. And it does tend to happen in males more than females. Now to prevent this, you obviously don't want to feed many foods that have purines, but that's really hard when you have a dog on dog food because many of the foods that are high in purines are cheap and that's what they put into dog foods. This makes it really hard and really expensive to try to keep your dog fed and healthy while also making sure they don't develop these stones. Many dog foods that have higher quality meats and higher, higher quality sources of protein don't have as many purines. However, that makes that food really pricey. So it can be really expensive to feed a Dalmatian and to go to vets to update if you see anything wrong with their urine or straining to urinate, you want to go to the vet immediately and get their urine analyzed. And so those costs can add up. Dalmatians are prone to deafness. About 30% of all Dalmatians have some sort of hearing defect, whether it's unilateral deafness or bilateral deafness, which means they're completely deaf. This isn't something you need to worry about too much because most breeders, which is why you want to go to a responsible breeder, will have the BAER test done. BAER stands for Brainstem Auditory Evoked Response. And they perform this test to test the puppies before they sell them to see if they have any sort of hearing problem. So you shouldn't have to worry about that, but if you do get a Dalmatian that's not tested, you are risking deafness. Another important part of owning a Dalmatian is exercise. Now I bring this up because a lot of the disabled community has issues getting their dogs exercise, and a Dalmatian needs far more exercise than something like a Lab or a Golden. Dalmatians can easily run 10, 15, 20 miles at a time. They are coaching dogs and they're meant to continue running for long periods of time. That's why they have the large broad chest to hold their lungs that can expand really large. It is in my personal experience that a Dalmatian that isn't exercised is a Dalmatian that does not listen. Before Lucky goes out to work or back when we were training, before he could be trained, he had to have a walk or fetch or something like that so that his focus was on me and not on everything else going on. Lucky and I have a schedule where in the morning we have 30 minutes of either fetch, kickball, bike ride, whatever, and then at night we go on our long walk. That is a minimum for Lucky, and a lot of times that's not enough. If he hasn't been exercised before work, I can definitely see that he's distracted and that he wants to go home. Now I do wanna stop myself here and say this is my experience. Um, a lot of people say when I are working, massive amounts of people say, he's so calm for a Dalmatian. And that's because Lucky it has been really good at learning that when the vest is on, it's time to work. But he is not calm. He is far from calm. At home, he is a monster. So if you have any sort of disability that limits your ability to get out and get exercise or to exercise your dog and you don't have some sort of resource like a dog walker or someone else in the family who can do that for you, I would not recommend a Dalmatian at all. They need a lot of exercise to listen and to be a good dog. I firmly believe that the stigma around Dalmatians being hyper and unruly is because people are so used to getting them and not giving them the amount of exercise a Dalmatian needs. A Dalmatian cannot thrive off of a lab's amount of exercise. They need a Dalmatian's amount of exercise. And that can be really hard to obtain. Even for us, Lucky needs more exercise. And so we've been finding ways to get him more exercise in ways that I'm able to handle. We do this by his weighted vest, and now we're starting bike drawing so that he can pull and get more exercise and I don't have to pedal as much and risk passing out. So Dalmatians are not good for service work if you aren't able to get them their exercise they need so that they listen. Now another reason that I don't think a lot of people think of is attention. Dalmatians are not a common breed and a lot of service dog handlers obviously don't want their dog to be pet and stared and whistled and shouted at. Having a dog that is not a common sight incites those responses in people whether you want it to or not. Now, I've never had a service dog before Lucky, so I can't compare it to a more common breed like a Lab, but I can definitely say that I get some crazy questions and some really 
crazy people coming up to us purely because of his breed. I cannot count the amount of times I've been asked if his spots come off and even just, is he a Dalmatian? Now this may not be a problem for people, obviously, but you do get stopped a lot for questions when you have a breed that's not as common. And I love to talk about Dalmatians and stuff, but you know, when you're going to the grocery store to get stuff and you aren't feeling too hot, it's not really the time to talk. But you can't stop the public from asking questions about your dog. Something very specific about that would be social anxiety issues. I would never recommend a Dalmatian for someone with social anxiety. My anxiety pertains to gun violence and things like that, so it doesn't bother me too much. But for people who are afraid of the public and afraid of being noticed or being the center of attention, a Dalmatian is not right for you. And for some people, a service dog isn't right for you. A Dalmatian will have you being looked at. It will have you being talked about. And if that makes you uncomfortable, this is definitely not the breed to choose. You'll want something that's a lot more common. And so people just kind of look and say, oh, that's a service dog and keep going. Even just being a Dalmatian makes a lot of people question if he's a service dog. And so they come over and start asking. Another thing I wanna point out is mobility work. Most Dalmatians will not be big enough for even light mobility. An average Dalmatian will fall either between 19 to 24 inches tall and anywhere from 50 to about 75 pounds. And depending on how much you weigh, that may or may not work for you, but for most people, that is far too small for mobility. Lucky for reference is 26 and a half actually inches tall, and right now he is 83 pounds. So Lucky does fall in the category for being safe for me to use for light mobility. Even if he loses some pounds, he is still safe for me. But most Dalmatians will not fall into that category. So if you need mobility or think you may need mobility, that might not be the breed for you. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about is temperament. Dalmatians were used as guard dogs and also as coaching dogs, among other things. And they would actually guard the horses at night as well. Dalmatians, despite this myth that goes around, are not inherently aggressive dogs. That's not true. That all started when the movie came out and they began getting overbred, which causes aggression in dogs when you have a bunch of inbred puppies. That said, Dalmatians were guard dogs and that is still a trait that they can possess is being very good at guarding. In my experience, Dalmatians tend to pick one person that is theirs and that's the person they connect with. Pongo connected more with my mom than me and Lucky has obviously connected with me. When thinking about that, it is a very cute thing and a very nice thing for a service dog, but you also need to be careful that the dog isn't guarding you. For example, if I was to pass out, it would be a huge danger if emergency medical services came and Lucky was guarding me. There have been some very sad, very horrible incidences where people have shot people's service dogs because they were guarding someone who needed to get into an ambulance and they couldn't get the dog away safely. And of course, this goes for a service dog of any breeds, but I do know that Dalmatians tend to bond with a certain person and they can be protective of that person. Temperament is not going to be a stable thing across every dog of a breed. You can get a Dalmatian that's horribly aggressive that's just absolutely unuseful for service work. Or you can get a Dalmatian that doesn't really bond to anyone and is more like a, a therapy suited dog and likes to go greet everybody and see what they're doing. Nothing is going to be 100% throughout the entire breed like that. But these are characteristics that are more common that you should look out for and know about before considering them as a service dog. Well, in summary, Dalmatians, I do not recommend as service dogs for the following reasons. They're definitely not a beginner breed because they require a special and complicated diet. Dalmatians are extremely active, far more active than something like a lab. And for people with disabilities who have really bad days, if you don't exercise your Dalmatian, you may end up with them absolutely destroying something like your couch or going out and working and them deciding, I'm not working today, it's playtime. And finally, Dalmatians have a temperament 
that is definitely based around their history of coach dogs and guard dogs and they like to bond with one person but you need to be really careful because they can be very protective of that person who would most likely be you and that can be a danger but saying all this if you've had dogs before if you know what you're getting into if you are prepared to handle these situations to put the work into the extra food costs or maybe even buying raw so that you know what's in it if you're prepared to handle any behavioral problems and you are completely comfortable having a service dog that's going to draw a lot more attention than other breeds may a dalmatian service dog may be right for you but the amount of people who fall into the category of being able to meet these expectations or wanting to meet the expectations because this is more extra than some other breeds may be is fairly low. As I always tell people, there is a reason why Labs and Goldens and Poodles are very common as service dogs. They are bred and raised to be service dogs from a lot of breeders. They specifically breed for a service dog temperament. That's not something you're gonna find in a Dalmatian breeder breeding for a specific temperament for service work. And so that's gonna make it a little bit harder when you evaluate a puppy or an adult dog to see if they're gonna be fit for the work purely on temperament basis. Something you've probably heard before is need before breed. And that is so much more important than people give it credit for. When looking for a service dog, you're looking for a dog that's capable of mitigating your disability. You're not looking for looks, you're not looking for aesthetic. You're looking for a dog that can help you live your life. Picking a dog purely on looks or just because you like that sort of dog is probably gonna end up being bad for you in the long run. So many dogs have such unique personalities and unique character traits that need to be taken care of that people don't consider those when they're picking them. They just look at looks. And those people are the ones who unfortunately end up dropping those dogs off in shelters or at rescues because they didn't know what they were in for. They just thought all dogs are the same, it's just what's on the outside that's different. So it is my personal opinion that Dalmatians are not very good service dogs. There are definitely better options out there. But for me, a Dalmatian worked and I'm very happy he worked. I'm very lucky he worked. And I don't know if I'll do it again. Well, I have a huge passion for Dalmatians and I already know who I want my next Dalmatian from as a breeder. I do go into it fully expecting a dog that will not meet these requirements and who will end up being a pet because I just know a Dalmatian's temperament is not normally a service dog temperament. Again, there are always dogs that fall outside the norm, whether it be in a bad way or a really good way. And maybe I'll get one again, who knows. And to finish off the video, I do want to say that there are a massive amount of Dalmatian books out there to learn about the breed if you do decide to get one, but I would be very careful because a lot of them have outdated information. One way to tell is if they tell you to avoid protein instead of purines. They used to think protein caused urate stones, but it's actually purines, which is a type of protein. So you wanna stay away from some bad information books. One I recommend that's really good is the official book of the Dalmatian. It was written by Dalmatian Club of America members who are the breed club for the AKC for Dalmatians. So these people make the standards for Dalmatians for the AKC. So this is very full of very accurate information. It's kind of pricey, but it's definitely worth it if you're getting a Dalmatian because it's a lot of information that you know you can rely on and you know is kept updated. There are some really nice pictures illustrating what a Dalmatian should look like from behind and stuff if you wanna get into confirmation. And then just general pictures that go with their history and things like training, breeding, all sorts of things like that. They also have sports and believe it or not, they mention service work. There is two, three pages on Dalmatians who are service dogs and what sort of tasks they perform. And then it goes into their job as war dogs. But Dalmatians can be service dogs. It's just a matter of does their personality, their characteristics, their requirements fit your lifestyle? But what do you think of Dalmatians as service dogs? 
Do you think they're good service dogs? Do you think they're bad service dogs? What sort of service dog do you have and would you recommend that breed? Comment below and next time I will have a task video. Bye.